Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here with a hot take. And uh, I want to use my screenwriter abilities to uh, write a story. So imagine uh, you're the president. And this, this, by the way, would be the the, the fantasy of a lot of Trump supporters. So, um, and it may very well, you know, it's it's probably a fantasy, but uh, it 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 seems like, you know, Well, let me let me pitch it to you. Let me pitch it to you like this. So, Trump, he's in office. He gets in office and. He's always sort of known that Washington is corrupt and he's dealt with these people. But he never really fully appreciated just how corrupt it was until he got there. I mean, literally he gets there and like he can't find enough loyal, competent people to put into the positions he needs. There's too many of them. And everybody in D.C. is just more corrupt than the next person. He's prepared for that up to a point. He does p appoint some of these idiots in order to kind of placate certain groups of people. He's balancing a lot of things, but ultimately he realizes it. It's just it's just hurting the process, and it's it's an impossible process trying to replace these idiots with people of comp competence. To some extent, you know, as a businessman, you get in there and you you you. You run a company and you kind of shake things out and and see who's good, who's bad, who you're going to keep, who you're going to fire. But that that process takes time, and Trump didn't have a lot of time. Four years is not a lot of time for that process. Um, so, you know, while being assailed from all corners of media, while while having to do the job, see in the private sector. Uh, a business could kind of not really shut down, but slow down, you know, wouldn't have to do everything all at once. Certainly wouldn't have to deal with media, but Trump had to balance those things and juggle it. But, you know, he thrives under that pressure. So that's good. But so he's doing that, but he sees that it's a slow process. He sli he sees the swamp for what it is and he wants to drain it. So, he also realizes that they may never let him get to a re-election. So he lays out a trap. And at the same time, he's very much a guy who, you know, thinks on his feet. So the trap really is to, well, I don't know what it is, because I don't know what Trump knows, but... It feels like he has something on these people. Like something really, really bad. And the reason I say that is because he's the president of the United States. He had access to the NSA who were recording everybody. Every phone call, every email. He has access to all the intelligence. All the classified stuff. He has access to it. They can't stop him from accessing it. So maybe in the course of accessing all that, he got all the proof he needed against, well, pretty much anybody that could challenge his authority. And to some extent, he's been using that to his, to his advantage because he doesn't have all that baggage that a lot of these politicians have. Some of them have done things that would put him in jail, like... Hunter and Joe Biden. Well, Hunter's not a politician, but Biden is. Joe is. And selling influence, that, that ain't good. That is not good. So he sets out to capture these guys, but at the same time, he also wants to win the election and sort of put it behind him because he could always augment the plan after he's reelected. But they're determined to get him out. So they short-circuit his plans. One after another. They short-circuit the election. 
they short circuit SCOTUS and the court cases. Um, they, the options that he has collapses. And as that's happening around him, he's seeing who his real, real friends are. He's seeing the guys who are willing to jump ship. He's seeing guys like Eric Swalwell who are really far, far in the other camp. Um, at the same time, he puts out that executive order in 2018. An executive order that would essentially give him sweeping powers against anyone who participated in foreign interference. Sweeping powers. The ability to seize everything they own, essentially. Um, and that was sort of a perfect cover for what happened while he was being impeached, right? Because when you hear about that, in 2018, you assume that's Trump placating the Democrats for the Russia thing. But I don't think it was. I don't think he placates them. And why would he on that particular score? Because he's essentially handing them more power if he were have, have to come back in 2024 and they did the same thing again. All oh, the Russians got you elected. Well, now they have sweeping powers to seize all his money if, you know, if they're able to convict him. You don't want that. So why would he pass that executive? Why would he write that executive order? Well, I think this is the trap he's laid out. And it's very complicated because it has to be to work. So, short of Pence, and maybe he's waiting to see if Pence will betray him. Or he knows Pence won't. He already knows he's going to be reelected. But while all that's going on, He's seeing who his friends are. He's seeing their moves. And his enemies are already starting to collapse because they don't have him anymore. CNN and MSNBC are in a panic. Even though their ratings have been up, they're looking towards the future. They're thinking about getting rid of Zucker. Warner Brothers is selling CNN, trying to. MSNBC is writing articles or people are writing articles about MSNBC, what's going to happen after Trump leaves? No one really knows because that's the only reason people are watching these channels. Um, so they're starting to disintegrate. All these media outlets are in a panic. They're trying to get ahead of the curve. So they may let Zucker go and sell off CNN and rebrand, or at least start the process enough so... If this works, they'll be hobbled <laughs> and and taken taken by surprise if Trump pulls this plan off. Now, this DNI report feeds in to that executive order because this would say, well, in fact, the DNI report was created specifically for the executive order. In 45 days after the election, um, they have to have this report on foreign interference. They couldn't come to a consensus according to the rumor. Uh, I think basically some of the partisan elements in the agencies are refusing to come to a consensus because they could easily just hand over the report and said, well, we couldn't come to an agreement. These guys said this and these guys said that. There's two, two or three schools of thought here. But they, they won't do that. They're purposely trying to delay this until after uh, January 6th. Or maybe not. Maybe they're just delaying it to the last possible minute. Because otherwise it would have happened tomorrow. And now it's are already being pitched as, well, it can't happen until January. Because these other agencies aren't cooperating. I think they're not cooperating on purpose. So, you know, I don't see any reason why they can't give the DNI report uh, in part 
why Trump's guy can't say, Ratcliffe here can't say, well, um, these other agencies haven't concluded their assessment. But these agencies have. So, um, now, the foreign interference, according to them, according to some within the IC community, uh, or IC, say that China, Iran, and Russia are to blame for interference. But how much is the question? Um, because the Iranians allegedly sent some kind of fake email pretending to be the Proud Boys and threatening Democrats who voted, who didn't vote for Trump. And that was weak sauce. But you could see that coming from the Iranians. They, you know, they don't have much to work with. However, they're saying that the Russians are pretty good at hacking and uh, they may have hacked in quite a ways. Same thing with China. So if this stuff were true and Trump could get the report in time, Trump could essentially go, well, who's connected to all this? And if they had some evidence that certain politicians were connected, like Eric Swalwell, um, they could potentially seize all of Eric Swalwell's assets like 100% and throw him in jail. He'd be in big trouble. Um, also, Dominion voting and anything associated with it would be in big trouble if they can't connect the dots. Now, there's been this big hack um, for a program called Solar Winds. Apparently, everybody in government or, or a lot of agencies use it and Fortune 500 companies and the hack is really, really bad. Like, the hackers got in six months ago and been there ever since. And it's a very complete hack where, like, people got everything. And this has happened in critical agencies in the United States. So the Russians, the Chinese, or both may have all this information. And not only that, access to built-in backdoors. Because when you have that much time in a computer network you not only get the information you can create things that will keep you uh in it from different directions even if they discover the hack the initial hack so they could still be interfering with stuff and the election but we won't know until we get a full forensic audit of every dominion voting machine we're getting some but not enough and not in time but if we got just enough info that Trump could do this, Trump could say, okay, that's it. I've, I've seen the evidence. I'm declaring the executive order operating. I'm using my special sweeping powers to do all these things that will expose the perpetrators. Will that be enough to turn the election? I don't but it could be enough that the people involved in this have exposed themselves because they think Biden's going in. So once they think that, they kind of let their guard down. They don't worry about talking to people because these people are incredibly arrogant and they hate Trump. In fact, one guy admitted in a Zoom chat a uh, guy, I believe he worked for Dominion, said something like, oh, we fixed it so Trump wouldn't win. That guy could be in major, major trouble if they traced anything back to him. Uh, he's toast. He is toast. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this could be the move. Why would Trump delay it? Eh, I'm not sure. It could be that he wants the um, he wants to see if Pence will back him up, and if he if he does, Pence turns the election over to Trump, then Trump doesn't need to uh, arrest everybody openly in order to maintain his presidency. 
he may be waiting for Pence to do that so he can then arrest everybody. Because if he arrests everyone now, you know, that probably will put people into a panic because a lot of the people who are connected to this are government related at the very least. You know, you're talking about people who raise money, um, who run campaigns, potentially the politicians themselves. If he has to arrest Biden, Joe Biden, for instance, it would be much better if Trump first won the election by whatever means. And then he, he said, okay, now we have a, uh, um, you know, a case here against against Joe, he's now under arrest. You couldn't just arrest them first. Then people would say, oh, you're just trying to usurp the election. So it may that may be the reason for all this waiting. On top of the fact, you got guys like Mitch McConnell bailing on him um, and other people who are bailing on him, especially like Fox News. And now Trump knows, hey, these guys aren't in our corner. They never were. They were just here for the power. And then he could push the process further. See, you just have to imagine that if you were in Trump's position and you had that magic bullet, metaphorical bullet, that you know at any time you could take out your opponent. There's no question. 100%, boom, you drop the hammer at any time. So the question is, why drop it immediately? Because you already know you're going to win. So why not let things play out and get an even bigger advantage? This is a strategy I learned in a game called Terraforming Mars. Although it's a strategy I'm not very good at because I'm very impatient. And I just want to play the damn game. But those who wait are rewarded in that game. So maybe Trump is waiting because he can watch all the chess pieces and some of them are going to take each other out and others are going to paint themselves in the corner. So when he goes, oh, by the way, I'm still president. And here are all the people who are in trouble. They're all going to jail. Oh, and here is the list of people who's, who abandoned me. I'm not going to uh, campaign for them anymore. I'm former President Two-Term Trump, one of the most popular presidents in modern times. If you're a Republican, you got to come to me. Even if he's a one-termer, he may be thinking of that anyway. Maybe that's the play. Maybe there's no magic bullet here, but Trump is lining up the people that he's going to replace with Trumpian Republicans. Uh, and he's targeting the ones based on how they react to him. So it isn't about transforming the country. Maybe it's about transforming the Republican Party in his image. Or maybe it's both. Either way, it doesn't look like we're going to learn anything on December 18th. It's not going to be revealed. So, again, we're going to have to wait probably until after Christmas to see how this plays out. January 6th is the next milestone. After that, uh, the next milestone is inauguration. So, I, I really don't see... Uh, Trump running up to the podium uh, as Biden is about to put his hand on the Bible and saying, stop. <laughs> I just don't see him saying that. So if he's going to pull uh, this, whatever this is, he's got probably got to do it uh, on January 6th or before. Um, and there's rumors swirling. And the rumor is, well, the first one's not a rumor. Trump did cut the Pentagon off from the CIA. They no longer respond to the CIA's counterterrorism efforts. 
which was just odd to do. I'm not, no one's quite sure why Trump did that. It may be that he's trying to isolate and depower the CIA because what's coming is he's going he's gonna to go after the CIA. And he has to do that in order to stay in office because perhaps the CIA was involved in keeping, uh, fixing the election. I mean, that, that total speculation, but that's what the Frankfurt Germany raid was about. The CIA was kept out of the loop, allegedly. And they raided this place, allegedly, with the servers that had the votes and who ordered them. If Trump has that information, that could be the smoking gun that he's using to round up all these people. And since they were in Germany, since Dominion is a Canadian company or a Venezuelan company or whatever, um, foreign interference, not a problem. Not a problem at all. That is foreign interference it's from foreign soil. Uh, another moment or, or a tidbit, a rumor, you would say, Sargon of Akkad tweeted, uh, uh, talked about a tweet Dan Scrivino put out, a picture of everyone in the Oval Office having a meeting, and Scrivino saying something like, um, uh, this was a historic day, uh, someday I'll be able to tell you about it. The other rumor is that Trump sent the White House staff out of Washington. Now that comes from Sidney Powell, who hasn't delivered on any of these rumors yet. Now that could be just bad luck. She thought she was going to win SCOTUS. It's not happening. Um, although she's back in front of SCOTUS again. Yeah, I know. Sydney Powell, doggy. You're very excited. But we'll see. Um, so Trump sends, if this is all true, so Trump sends everybody out of the White House because he knows maybe it's going to get really ugly. And, or maybe he knows some people in the staff are not to be trusted. And he's trying to weed them out. Right, doggy? Or maybe this is all just rumor and bluster. And Trump is he's fighting legally. And he's going to fight to the end. But in the end, he's going to have to leave and start the new party. So he wants people to feel that he did everything he could to stay in. So they know he'll do everything he can to get back in the White House. So, you know, all we got right now, because we don't have all the info, is guesses. And uh, I'm in it until the wheels fall off. I want to see, you know, until Biden's up there mumbling about his... <laughs> with his hand on the Bible, mumbling away. Um, you know, I, I'm rooting for Trump. I'm still rooting for Trump. But, you know, if it doesn't happen, I, I'm i not optimistic, as, as Sargon said today. I'm not optimistic. It, things are extremely narrow. But if anybody can pull it off, it would be Trump. He has pulled off a bunch of things. Come here, John. Come here. Just stop walking. He has pulled off a bunch of things that I never thought he could do. But this is beyond. And it's not that I don't want him to win, but in Washington, you need support from groups of people. And I can't see where Trump has any more support from anybody, except maybe the military. Oops, sorry, doggy. Just sit here nice. Sit here nice. Um... Sit here. Just sit. So if he doesn't have support with anybody but the military, I mean, is he really crazy enough to try a military coup? That would make him the American Caesar. That would be the end of the Republic anyway. I, I can't really agree to that unless Trump is really careful. He'd have to, like, do a military style coup, uh, drain the swamp, uh, and really show us proof of that swamp, you know, and it would have to be China related at least, possibly Russian related, I guess, but 
I'm, I'm, I'm hedging my bet towards China. And um, he'd have to have a very specific timetable for turning it all back around. Um, and I, and honestly, uh, that, you know, as a libertarian, I, I would be against it unless he had that very specific timetable that would end and he'd have to put, go further than that. And he'd probably have to put in something that, <laughs> you know, he'd have to put in parameters so no other U S president could invoke those powers ever again. Unless the most extraordinary of circumstances, like the recent events. And then maybe after two years, three years, he transitions back, says that's it. We're, we're, we're going back to our system. Um, we've cleaned everything out. Everything's good now. We should be good for another... 200 years before something like this might have to happen again. That would be a very scary time for a lot of reasons. Um, I really don't want that to happen. I think the ideal scenario would be that Pence says, hey, the state, I don't recognize governors. I recognize state legislatures because that's what the Constitution says. So I'm giving these to the state legislatures. F you. And try to stop me. Uh, and then Pelosi goes bananas and tries to impeach Trump, but it fails because um, the Senate won't, won't support her. And even Mitt Romney says, ah, screw you. Screw you. You can't offer me enough. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Um... Hopefully we can get through Christmas and New Year's and, and, uh, and this will at some point be over. It's so mentally exhausting, isn't it? The, the election. I, I will look forward to a moment when this is all over and uh, we could take a little bit of a vacation from politics someday. 